All right, so let's uh, let's create let's use the uh, the uh, the employee model to now uh, do updates and creations and deletes, right? So let's do that. For instance, uh, we might want to be able to create new employees, so we could we'd write perhaps a function that would allow it to do that, right? Something like uh, create uh, employee and take as argument an employee object, right? Uh, so to do that, we would um, again do a return. We would use the employee model and use the create function. There is no insert. There's a create uh, function, which is the equivalent of an insert in MongoDB. Right? It takes as argument a JSON object with the fields, with the fields described in the schema. Right? They need to match right? the username, password, first name, and last name. Uh, so let's use it to create a new employee. So let's close the employee uh, username uh, by us username, right? Instead, let's create a new uh, a JSON object var. Uh, let's create Dan uh, with the appropriate uh, schema this time, right? So this will be a username uh, uh, Dan and a password um, also Dan. Uh, we'll have a, a first name. Uh, Daniel, and we have a uh, last name, uh, Craig. Okay, uh, and let's call our model. Will be uh, employee uh, model dot uh, create. Wait, what? Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, no, just create employee. I'm sorry. All right, so let's call our create function. Create, create employee function and we'll pass in the Dan the Dan function yes uh, and let's see what comes back we'll say then uh, function function response and we'll let's display the let's display console uh, log and then the response okay let's do that let's run this uh, well first first let's make sure that Dan is not there so uh, apparently we only just have three we have Alice Bob and Charlie. We don't have Dan in there. Uh, so let's run this and see if this succeeds. Let's do a terminal and let's do execute. Okay. Notice what comes back. Notice the response. The response is showing you, showing us the object that was just inserted into a database. See that? With the data that we gave it plus the new underscore ID primary key that was added uh, to a database. Uh, we, we can also do a query here and we'll notice that indeed we have that new record right that new document added to the database with Daniel Craig in there uh, okay the um, um, now now one of the things that we'd like to be able to do maybe is that uh, say say we want to uh, we, we want to uh, right after we create an, ob uh, uh, an object say we would like to be able to display the objects right after Right after they're created, that that's a that's a common use case, right? Right. Uh, now, what you would expect here is that if we create a new a new user, like say we create Frank, right? And this will be Frank, and this will be Herbert, maybe. And this will be uh, just password. Okay. Let's create Frank here, right? So this will create uh, this will create Frank. And this will go and retrieve the list of employees. Okay, so let's run this. Okay, notice that uh, indeed um, this is this is the array. Notice what happened. We got the array before we got the object. See that? Look at the the array we got, which does not include Frank. So, so, uh, but then we got the object Frank. So this, so it kind of like happened backwards, right? It first went out to fetch the, the users, and then it created the, the object. But what happened? Why? We wrote it. We wrote it this way, right? Well, because we, we tend to think uh, um, sequentially, right? That's, that's where we spend most of our time, right? In a von Neumann machine, things are executed from top to bottom, from left to right, okay? But this is not what's happening. This is asynchronous, right? This, this is a little bit more expensive call than this one. Uh, so so the, uh, there was no, we didn't wait for this, for this to happen. The thread just continued, right? It did not wait for, for, for a response, right? It went 
and call immediately to find all employees, right? This could have worked, could have worked, right? Could have been that indeed it would have created first the, uh, the user, the employee, and then it would have displayed the list of all the employees. And it, maybe it works sometimes and maybe it doesn't work sometimes, right? Those are the worst kinds of bugs, right? That, that they're intermittent, uh, we can't reproduce them. Sometimes they work, sometimes they don't, right? And, and, uh, and I know if, uh, uh, many of you will come back and say, I don't know, I created, but I, not until I refresh the page do I see any change, right? That's a very common, very typical um, uh, problem, right, with these kinds of uh, programming, right? Uh, that what, what, we've, what, we've, what we've coded here is what is referred to as a, a, as a uh, race condition, right? We have two, uh, two processes running at the same time, and there's no guarantee of what's going to happen first. There's no guarantee. Sometimes it might happen one way, sometimes it might happen another way, right? It's uh, almost, almost, almost random, right? So what we need to be able to do is to synchronize these things, right? That we want to force a particular order. The only way to force it is to, is to maybe perhaps grab this, grab this, and put it in here to nest them, right? Do not do the find until I come back from the creation, right? That would guarantee, right, that the, that the database uh, accesses are written in the correct sequence, correct, right? Uh, but again, this is what we were trying to avoid, right? We were trying to avoid this kind of nesting, Right, where, 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 uh, where, where is, but it's really the only way uh, that we can force uh, uh, synchronicity, right? A particular synchronicity. So, uh, to, av to, uh, to, 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 uh, to avoid having to write this, you know, in this, in this kind of, uh, you know, nesting, 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 when we want to synchronize, right? What promises allows us to do is to rewrite this in a, in a uh, alternative syntax, right? Notice that let's let's create yet another one, right? Uh, we did Frank, so let's create Ed. Okay, uh, let's uh, let's rewrite this. Let's run it. Okay, so now now it worked. Notice that first it inserted the object, right? It printed it, and after printing it, it went out to a database, and it came back with all the objects, including the new ad. New ad. See that? We guarantee the sequence, but with the cost of this syntactic nightmare, right? Imagine if if I had to do several sequential things, right? We would have code that you know just nests uh, uh, one side of another. It'd be really, really hard to read. Okay, so. Uh, what what uh, what uh, pr promises allow you to do these thens here uh, is to do the following. Do the following. What we can do is we can return this, return. Right. That means that this function right here is returning what? It's returning whatever find all employees returns. Right. A promise. Yes. Right. So that means that this then. I can syntactically move it out of here and put it down here, okay? So something that was nested inside of something else, right? Now I can write it as if it looks as if it's sequential. You see that? But it's not sequential, right? Right, it's really nested inside of each other, but this syntax makes it a little bit easier to, to write, right? Things that are asynchronous Right to write them as if they were synchronous. Okay, uh, so let's let's try that. Uh, so this would be. Oh, did I did, did I do F first and then E? I don't know my alphabet. Okay, so this is uh, Greg. This would be Greg. Alan. Okay. So let's insert and see if this works. Let's uh, write it again. Let's run it again. And there it is. It does work, right? So it first it first inserts it, and then it it comes back with the with the list here. Everybody good? All right. Awesome. Let's uh, let's keep going. 